Everyone, this is Liz Alpern live from Brooklyn, New York. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, the evening is just setting in and I am excited to be making a big pot of matzo ball soup today and showing you all how to do it. It's so easy. So let's just get started. Let's dive right in and we'll talk about what matzo ball soup is. Matzo ball soup. I've got some matzo crushed up also known as matzo meal. But matzo meal, which is something that you can buy in American supermarkets, uh, is really a bit more of a modern invention, right? To buy a box of matzo meal. This is something that manufacturers developed at a certain point because they had leftover matzo after Passover. So they said, why not crush it up and turn it into matzo meal? And so I actually had leftover matzo from, pa from Passover and I crushed it up myself uh, just in the food processor. And one of the things about uh, when you make your own matzo meal is that it's going to be a bit coarser. So you are going to have uh, a more rustic matzo ball, which I love. Um, so here we go, we got the main ingredient here. I also have some eggs as a binder. I have some salt and a pinch of baking powder. You don't need the baking powder. Um, I have some parsley, some chopped up parsley. Again, that's my own twist. I love color. I want flavor. You could put dill, you could put any herbs you have at home uh, or none at all. Um, and then of course I have some uh, soup. Uh, I have got some chicken soup. We'll talk more about that later. Um, and I've got uh, some rendered schmaltz. This is some poultry fat. Um, there's a photo of it, so you'll see it. Um, but this is liquid gold. Now this was made from chicken skins, which I have here, um, which I'm gonna turn into crispy gribbonous um, as, a, as a snack later. But all I had to do was when I made my chicken soup, took off all those chicken skins and um, cook them down very slowly with some onions and let the fat pour out. And that is the fat that I have. And uh, historically it was also certainly goose schmaltz, goose fat rendered, not necessarily chicken like we have so common here in the United States. So all I'm gonna do right now is combine these ingredients into a very, very simple batter here. I'm gonna start with my dry ingredients, mix them up so I make sure I've got everything uh, evenly distributed. Right, okay, so now I've got my parsley in there. Let's get that in there. Very, very simple, this couldn't be easier. Um, and now I'm gonna add my liquids. I've got all that schmaltz, that is beautiful. Wow, my kitchen smells amazing. I've got some eggs and the soup. So what I'm gonna do is mix this into a batter. It should be pretty loose. Uh, and um, I'm gonna let it sit uh, in the fridge or out uh, for the next, I'd say, about 20 minutes or so. Um, it's very loose right now. We wanna make sure we get the whole thing. So I'm gonna scrape from the bottom here. I've got a uh, nice spatula. Um, I'm gonna let it sit in the fridge for 20 minutes or so, and it is gonna firm up. And while I do that, I am going to put a big pot of water to boil on the stove. So I'll see you in a second while we uh, swap that out. Okay, so we have our uh, matzo ball mix in the refrigerator, uh, firming up and cooling. Um, and I thought I would take a minute while I have a pot of water boiling to just talk about soup. Let's talk about soup for a second. So I have a big pot here of chicken soup. Now all I had to do was throw a chicken into a pot with some celery, some carrots, some onion, peppercorn, bay leaf, uh, some dill, some parsley, and you can throw so much else in there. Folks put uh, all kinds of bones that they might have, flunkin bones, beef bones. Uh, you could certainly put different aromatic, aromatics like thyme. Um, that's a common one to put in soup. Um, it's really it's really up to you and everybody's family has a bit of a different soup recipe. Um, but mine is pretty simple. And the idea is I'm covering those vegetables and chicken with water. And I'm just letting it cook slow and slow for a long time, about three hours minimum is what I think is right. 
Um, and eventually what will happen is when this cools off, I'm going to strain out this broth. That will be my soup broth. And um, I will, of course, adjust my salt. That's something that's very, very important as you're making your broth. Um, and I will, um, and I will pick the chicken off of the actual um, bones off, off the carcass to have chunks of chicken in my soup. And maybe I'll put some vegetables in my soup as well when I reheat it after I strain it. I'll chop up some fresh carrots and celery and onion to put in the soup, uh, top it with some herbs. So we'll see what that looks like. Okay, our batter has been in the fridge for about 20 minutes. It's nice and firm. You can see that it's not jiggling anymore. And I've got a pot of salted boiling water on the stove. And what I like to do is get my hands wet. So I've got a little cup of water here um, and form little balls here and drop them in the boiling water. Um, and um, there's many different opinions on the size that they should be. Um, I grew up with giant matzo balls, giant knedelach. Um, certainly uh, that is one style. Now at this point, I'd say I make them a little bigger than a walnut, uh, but I like, I like them on the bigger side. I like one big matzo ball in my bowl of soup and folks have many different opinions on this topic. So uh, whatever feels right to you is what you should do. There's no wrong way, there's no wrong size. All right, we did it. And I'm just here giving you a close up. Pulled out those matzo balls out of the boiling water. They got huge. And now I've got a beautiful bowl of soup here. Mmm, I've got chunks of chicken and I've got the soup. Um, smells amazing. Golden chicken broth, chunks of chicken and a big matzo ball. I'm going to garnish it with some dill and enjoy. Um, and I hope you enjoy it when you try it yourself. So thank you so much. Always a pleasure to make soup. <laughs>